Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel and thank you for taking your own time out to check out this movie review and as you're watching this video as of right now, it has been a couple of weeks since I last did a movie in the Michael J. Fox filmography and today I'm back with an absolute banger of a movie that you may have never even seen or even heard of but after this review, you're going to want to watch this movie because today we're talking about Bright Lights, Big City. And when I say today we're talking about that movie, it's not just me. I've got an awesome guest joining me on today's collaboration. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest. So take it away. Hey everyone, for those who don't know me, I'm Sydney Volpe. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Letterboxd where I talk about all sorts of movies. I'm so glad to finally be collabing with Mike, the Michael J. Fox expert. I've gotten so many good recommendations from him to explore Michael J. Fox's filmography. And Bright Lights Big City was a really interesting place to start because he's playing a role here that's very different from what most people are used to seeing from him. I've only seen him in Back to the Future and heard his voice work in Atlantis and Stuart Little, but here he's basically playing a drugged out, deadbeat yuppie. I'm also very unfamiliar with the director James Bridges' work, so overall I was just really excited to visit this film and watch something I wouldn't normally watch. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I've got the incredible Sydney Volpe joining me for Bright Light Big City. And one thing I've really loved about doing this filmography as of right now is I am getting different people to collaborate with me on certain movies. And a lot of the time, a lot of these guests of mine who are close friends, they've never seen kind of like the darker side or kind of like the grittier side of Michael J. Fox acting career compared to you know the most common names he's known for for like back to the future as sydney mentioned his voice work in Stuart little or atlantis which by the way i've never seen atlantis so i'm curious to get to that one when i do get to it so firstly awesome to know that sydney is on board and i give her this project of checking out bright lights big city and joining me so big thank you to sydney for joining me and let's get into some cool facts a little bit of behind the scenes of the movie and then we're going to hand it back over to sydney because the behind the scenes stuff is is really really interesting so the director of this movie is James Bridges who I'm unfamiliar with his past works and I do know that he directed maybe a total of like six or seven movies so not a lot of movies and overall I've never heard of any of those titles apart from Bright Lights Big City which came out in May of 1988 and this indeed in fact turned out to be James Bridges last directorial feature as he did pass away a couple of years after this movie so firstly you call for the rest in peace to james bridges and my thoughts of course are with his friends and family and yeah you know so it's really cool that james bridges got a chance to make this film and leave this kind of legacy behind him of this movie and also in this of course our main star is michael j fox but behind the scenes and before all of that the initial director attached to this project was of course Joel Schumacher. Of course, the guy who may be known for one of the worst Batman movies ever, Batman and Robin, you know? Yes, Joel Schumacher was attached to this. And also, the part was offered to a very famous actor, but he turned it down due to the kind of like drugs involvement in this movie. And that actor is none other than Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tom Cruise was scheduled to be the star of this movie with Joel Schumacher directed at the helm which is absolutely crazy to think about this movie could have been completely different because it is based in general on a novel slash book by Jay McKinnery who I've actually never read the book before so I can't tell you if this is a faithful adaptation or not but yeah Jay McKinnery wrote this book and Overall, a couple of things happen on behind the scenes. And then, of course, we've got James Bridges, who end up like, kind of firing like six or seven people from the cast. And then, you know, Michael J. Fox is in here. You've also got Keeper Sutherland, Swishy Kurtz, who I know is kind of like the secretary in Lie Alive and Jim Carrey's character in that movie. And we've also got Phoebe Cates, who was in a lot of movies in the 90s, like Gremlins and I believe Drop Dead Fred. You know, that kind of stuff, really. So really, really cool backstory behind this movie and the plot of Bright Lights Big City is all around this writer, Michael J. Fox, who plays a character called Jamie Conway, as he's living in New York City, but also trying to come to grips and terms of the death of his mother, while also kind of juggling all of those emotions and dealing with the fact of him and his wife have separated. So with that in mind, let me hand it straight over to Sydney, because what I want to know, Sydney, is what positives do you have 
for this movie. I was really pleasantly surprised by Bright Lights Big City. I have a lot of positives for it. I thought that maybe you would kind of skate by on Michael J. Fox and Kiefer Sutherland's charm, and it definitely leans on it, but there was something deeper going on here that I found really intriguing. I knew pretty much nothing about the film going in, so I was surprised to find out that it was kind of this slice of life film about Jamie's self-destruction and all of these things that were happening to him that were kind of his own fault. He spends most of the film trudging through his yuppie lifestyle, kind of throwing himself a pity party. So it is a looser plot, but his actions are given an explanation. The film is given structure with these flashbacks where we learn more about his mom dying from cancer and how he's having such a hard time coping with his ex-wife leaving him and doing drugs so often. Towards the end, there are a few scenes that rely really heavily on Michael J. Fox's performance. There's one at a party where he has a confrontation with his ex-wife and then he has this drunken monologue at his co-worker's house that is a masterclass in acting. He did a phenomenal job. And then I also like the last sequence a lot where he's walking through New York City just eating a baguette and you see the city in the background and he kind of reaches this point of emotional catharsis and there's this this realization going on and, and self-improvement and kind of learning to move past all these things that we see him struggle with through the entire film. Again, I haven't seen any of James Bridges' other work, but the story was very coherent and it was also very stylish. Mike says that this is why he picked this film for me. I loved the production design. All the sets felt very real and lived in, which added this realism to his life in New York City. And, and it all kind of made New York City feel like its own character in the film. We have this 80s aesthetic with the neon lights and the synth score and these underground club settings. And there was also a lot of flair with the way it was shot. So overall, I, I found it really engaging and kind of that visual and tonal aesthetic made it an even more enjoyable watch for me. Yeah, absolutely awesome, Sydney, hearing your positives for Bright Lights Big City. And I definitely got to agree with a lot of them that you did pick up on because I think what also helps give this kind of like stylized feel, which is why I picked this project out for Sydney because I know that she can like to like a stylized movie and something kind of different. And I thought this is right up her alley. And I think that kind of cinematography and set location news certainly helps with part of the cinematographer in this, who is Gordon Willis, who is most known for doing the cinematography back in the day for the Godfather trilogy. So I think that kind of speaks volumes in itself. But then also, the music is done by Donald Fagan, who if you're unfamiliar with who Donald Fagan is, he helped do music for The Simpsons from the start up until now. He's also done a lot of TV for like, for example, like Euphoria most recently. And he also did it for Zodiac as well so yeah really some big names attached behind the scenes and behind the camera of this movie and that was what re really makes it unique because what Sydney mentioned about the positives about this movie being stylized I absolutely agree the 80s feel and aesthetic of this movie kind of really screams out to you and especially like the nightclub scenes I really liked those scenes because it kind of just felt like kind of like fun but then at the same time kind of felt like a bit grimy it should I guess at the same time but of course nightclub scenes back in the 80s are completely different to nowadays so I definitely can understand why but I've also got to praise Michael J Fox's performance in this movie because this is actually the first movie where he took on a more serious role compared to his roles say like Light of Deer, for example, that I covered recently here on to the channel. Back to the Future, of course, the modern one, and like Teen Wolf, stuff like that. So this is his kind of first serious role. And I think that he did a fantastic job of trying to sell this character, Jamie Conway, who is going through this big depression and this kind of deep dive into his life where, as Sydney mentioned, like a self-destruct as such. And it's absolutely true. He's trying to balance being this writer, trying to do his job, but at the same time, he turns to alcohol and drugs to relay that in his life. And that's what's kind of burying him from kind of rising above that to accept what's happened in the past, move on from it, and become a better person. So I really admire that about him. And also a cool little fact about the ending of this movie when Sydney mentioned that it kind of closes with the New York skyline and him eating a baguette. They actually planned an alternate ending, but they went with that ending to please the studio, which was quite interesting because the alternate ending involves Tracy Pollen, who is actually Michael J. Fox's 
wife in reality and they actually started dating from this movie which is kind of crazy and they've been together ever since but the other alternate ending was Michael J Fox actually writing a novel called Bright Lights Big City and Vicky Tracy Pollan in plays Vicky in the movie sorry she was going to be his new girlfriend and he was going to be just kind of happier that he wrote this novel and his girlfriend was there as well so I kind of like both endings to be honest because the one that we do get really kind of brings a wrap up to what we see play out throughout the movie but also kind of like that journey we follow Jimmy Conway on for this entire movie gets summed up in such a nice way to an extent where you kind of feel satisfied and you're happy for the character at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but yeah, definitely some awesome positives in here. And I also have to praise the supporting cast as well, whether it is Phoebe Cates, who plays Amanda, of course, uh, Jimmy Conway's ex-wife, who you learn a lot about and kind of a bit of backstory through this kind of dinner scene as such. And that dinner scene alone is truly phenomenal. And I loved that scene and the way it plays out and just... The masterclass, as Sydney mentioned, of Michael J. Fox's acting in that scene is really, be, you have to behold for yourself to see that because really he gives a great performance and he sells you on this story when there's no flashbacks involved. It's purely just him talking through that dialogue, which is excellently crafted. You get the sense of this story. You get why he is kind of, how he is and how he's been feeling and that really transcended well into the rest of this script so with all that in mind sydney what are your negatives for the movie in terms of negatives even though i loved michael j fox's performance i didn't always find the character completely convincing there were some conflicting things that he did that made me unsure of who he was really supposed to be like putting a ferret in his ex-boss's office felt kind of out of place and i never really bought into him being a coked out deadbeat it seems a lot like Kiefer sutherland's character was supposed to be a bad influence on him but he was also doing some bad stuff on his own and he seemed like he was really a sweet kid at heart. So I think the pieces were all there. In my experience, they just never came together to create that really strong and believable character. I also think there was a really interesting opportunity here to explore kind of the privilege that Jamie had and how a lot of this was self-pity and this Freudian connection that's happening between his, his mom and his ex-wife. But it all ultimately felt a little watered down to me. And I think a lot of that is it just being a product of its time. I don't think James Bridges was trying to critique white male privilege and he doesn't have to. It, it feels a lot like this was maybe a reflection on personal experiences and a story about a character that he relates to. And I enjoyed that a lot, even if I feel like the themes could have gone even deeper. Yeah, awesome here in your negative, Sydney. And to be honest, again, I kind of have to agree. So another little fact about the behind the scenes stuff of this movie is that whether it was like agents or whether it was someone in the writing department, I'm not exactly who it was, but they were very wary of Michael J. Fox doing kind of so much drugs and kind of smoking in the movie because they didn't want to water down his image. And I was kind of thinking, well, that's a bit condescending because you're casted him in a role where he's drinking alcohol and doing drugs and in the meantime in reality in michael j fox's first autobiography lucky man if you've ever read that there was a spell especially during this movie he would generally be partying with Kiefer sutherland during the night drinking alcohol so i guess in a sense this movie is a representation of him at that time which is kind of crazy not seeing he was doing drugs or anything by the way yeah I, I think with that kind of like watered down image and that kind of like restrictions in the background i think that is truly what held michael j fox back a little bit of maybe giving a full conventional performance because don't get me wrong i would say about 85 percent of this movie is terrific performing by him but i think the kind of like watered down what Sidney mentioned again where i agree with kind of really stopped him from maybe giving like an Oscar performance in my own personal opinion because I think like if for example they had him to the point where he's doing like these drinking binges and he was falling asleep in back alleys and kind of like selling you on more of this kind of like just deadbeat as such to a point with him just having this pity party which is a great analogy by the way 
yeah, I think that's kind of what stops and holds it back a little bit. And I, I feel like Keith the Sutherland's character for me, Tad, I wasn't fully sold on him. So the reason why is because, by all means, you know, I understand he's kind of a bad influence in a sense for Michael J. Fox's character, Jamie Conway. And I get why he was kind of put in that position. But besides kind of, you know, partnering Jimmy Conway up with Vicky, played by Tracy Pollan's character, as kind of just like a favourite in a sense to him, he didn't really do anything positive for Michael J. Fox's character in this movie. His character wasn't really rootable, or at least I didn't anyway. <laughs> so yeah, uh, with that in mind, uh, Sydney, last thing I want to ask you is, what's your overall thought on this movie? And if you had to, uh, what would your score be for Bright Lights? Big City. Overall, I enjoy Bright Lights Big City way more than I thought I would. It's just a low-budget 80s film that's stylish and it has a great lead performance from Michael J. Fox. And even if I thought the themes could have been more nuanced or impactful, the story did resonate with me and I really enjoyed seeing MJF show off his range. So I would give Bright Lights Big City 3 out of 5 stars. I'm so grateful to Mike for having me on his channel and for introducing me to a new side of Michael J. Fox. I'm really excited to keep exploring his filmography and hopefully to collab with Mike again. So make sure to subscribe to both of our channels so you don't miss that. Until next time, guys. Gotta give a huge, huge thank you firstly to Sydney Vaupier for joining me for this collaboration. And I've absolutely loved hearing your thoughts and loved having you as part of this collaboration and also getting you to explore more of Michael J. Fox's filmography than the movies that you know him from. So thank you very much for joining me, Sydney. And if you aren't subscribed to Sydney's channel already, what are you doing? Seriously, go down to that description box down below, click on the link that I've left there, press that red subscribe button and go check out her content. She is a phenomenal YouTuber, fastly on the rise, I guess at a rapid pace to be honest with you. And she deserves every single subscriber that she gets so go check out her channel and Sydney yeah in terms of your overall thoughts and scores I've got to disagree slightly so the reason why is overall thoughts wise I agree you know the positives and negatives are such what we've had I'm pretty much in about 90% of an agreement with you I think for me the score would be higher now this isn't because of course Michael J Fox is my favorite actor and having a bias that doesn't play into it because otherwise I wouldn't be giving you all a fair review for me I've sat on this movie for over a week. I watched it about over a week ago. And to be honest, it hasn't been off my mind ever since because I've watched like an analogy breakdown video on this because the first time I watched this was around 10 years ago or so. So at that point, I wasn't really a fan of this movie. And then watching it now, I was really captivated by this. And I really thought that with all the kind of like messages that's in this movie, the way that they actually try and relay those messages in a different way about this kind of coma baby throughout was so masterclass and so crafted in such a way that I was blown away by Bright Lights Big City. Is it a perfect movie? No, but sure as hell is pretty close in my opinion. So my overall score for Bright Lights Big City is... So yeah, if you've enjoyed this collaboration, and again, go check out Sydney's channel below. The link is in the description. Please give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And until the next time that I see you, I'll be seeing you later.